Hello, uh, today I wanted to show you how I put together uh, my lighted movie poster box. Uh, it's made out of uh, fairly inexpensive materials and um, it works quite well. So uh, the reason I'm doing this, this is my first YouTube video, but um, is when I went looking for these things, they're very expensive on the internet. Um, usually up in the neighborhood four or five hundred, even up to you know a thousand or more dollars a piece for these boxes. And uh, you know, I think the solution I've come up with is pretty pretty good, and uh, it, you can do it for. Uh, probably for about anywhere between $100 and $120, depending on the materials that you may have on hand. So let me talk a little bit first about uh, the poster frame, because it's kind of the key to this, I think. I've made two of these, and uh, I've settled on this. Uh, the second one I made, the poster frame, works much better than uh, the cheaper plastic poster frames I've bought in the past. Now this is a what's called a snap frame, and they're available on Amazon. Uh, they're not inexpensive. They're about uh, 60 to $65 a piece, but it makes the whole project so much simpler and it makes it very easy to change uh, posters in and out of this once you have it all mounted on the wall and everything. So they're made out of aluminum uh, and the, kind of the key to these things is why they call them snap frames is because they snap open. The edges snap open and you can uh, just lay the poster and it has a clear cover uh, lens that goes over it. It's a flexible lens uh, over top of the poster. I'll kind of show you that if I can. Uh, it fits right down here. It's kind of just a clear lens, and then the poster lays under that. And this just lays uh, lays in the uh, lays in the frame. And on the back, it's it's uh, it looks white, but it's actually translucent, so light can shine through this. So it acts as a nice uh, a nice uh, diffuser for the light. Uh, so uh, so yeah. So the key to this is kind of the poster frame. Um, uh, these have holes you can see for mounting. Uh, and, and these can mount right into the box that you're going to build. So this thing mounts on top of a box and, uh, and you put the lights in the box and plug it in and you're ready to go. So I'm going to talk a little bit too about the box I made and the type of lights that I use because I think that's important. First let me cover the, uh, the box. So uh, I wish I had start, started this earlier actually because it's, it's mostly assembled now but it's, it's fairly simple and I'll walk through the steps of what I did. Uh, it's just a regular uh, box made out of uh, dimensional lumber you can buy at your home improvement center. It's, uh, I used uh, three inch poplar boards. Uh, you could buy pine, you could buy whatever the cheapest wood is. Um, I bought the poplar because it paints very easily. And then the back has a quarter inch plywood board. I actually had the quarter inch plywood on hand so I had to piece two sections together. I didn't have a wide enough piece so this is actually um, just uh, aluminum duct tape uh, and it's painted black on the back. It kind of seals the uh, two pieces together. And then I, I, I basically just screwed it in around the edge. Now, my frame when I made it, I did a, a, a rabbit in the back of the frame so that the, so the plywood back would fit down into the frame. It's not necessary. Uh, if you don't have the tools or the skills to do that, you can actually just measure uh, the plywood for the same dimension as the box and just nail it or uh, screw it into the uh, into the box itself straight onto the back of it. So so that's the back of the box and of course I painted it black. I just want to talk real quickly about the construction of the box itself. Um, as I said I used uh, kind of a butt joint here to to join the boards. Uh, you, can con you can construct these or put them together any way that that you want. Uh, one method would be to drill you know holes in the end and just run screws in to join the two boards together. Uh, maybe a little wood glue and, and screws. You can nail them uh, if you like. Uh, I used a, a different technique called pocket holes. Uh, they're joined from the inside. You can't see it because of the tape, uh, which makes a real solid joint. But uh, any any way that you can put these box together, I, I think would work fine. Uh, the um, kind of what gives it its strength when, is when you put the back on anyway. So the back uh, is what squares it, makes it perfectly square as well as what gives it kind of the structural strength uh, uh, to keep it from twisting and turning on you. So inside the box uh, I, I covered it with this aluminum, some more of this aluminum uh, duct tape. Uh, you can see it. Uh, it serves two purposes really. One, uh, it, it, it acts as a nice reflective surface so that all the light is reflected forward and not absorbed by uh, the wood. Uh, the second thing uh, that it does is that it provides a really nice uh, surface for these strip LED lights. And I'll talk a little bit about, more about those in a second uh, to adhere to. These things stick really well 
to this aluminum tape. And if you go out on the forums or on the customer reviews for these LED strip lights, one of the comments that you often see is that you know the lights don't stick well to surfaces; they they come loose. Um, I, I've used these in several projects around the house. We have them under our kitchen uh, cabinets for our countertop lights, and uh, the key to it is to uh, prep the surface well. So if you're putting them on wood or whatever, you want to clean it with an alcohol or something to get the grease and and grime off. Uh, if you're using something like this aluminum tape, you don't have to do anything. They stick really, really well to this. They, they, they will not come off. Um, so I covered it, uh, you know, the whole box, uh, lined it with the aluminum tape, and then uh, peeled and stuck the LED strips. Now these, these LEDs, I'll talk a second about those. Um, you can buy them on Amazon as well. They're about $10 a roll, and they come in these packages uh, on a, like a little reel. So there's, there's a little over, I think, 16, about 16 and a half foot of LED lights on each reel. And uh, they, uh, uh, you just roll them off and you can cut them, like every two inches, I believe, you can cut them. And then either solder them together if you need extras or you want to add another strip on the end of one, you can just solder it. Or they even make a jumper plug that has clips on it. And I'll show you that in a second, that you can put the clips to join one to the other. Um, I prefer soldering them. I, I think it works better. I've had some problems in the past with the clips uh, losing connection. Now, another thing about the lights is they come in different color temperatures, and you're going to notice when I show you mine, I've used uh, two different color temperatures. I have some warm white lights, which are more incandescent color, they're 3100K uh, temperature, and I have some on here that are the 5000K temperature, uh, what they call bright white LEDs. So, uh, you can kind of see here, I hope this comes in focus, um, the 16.4 uh, foot per row, they draw 24 watts, uh, the whole row. So. Uh, they, they're very, very easy on energy, and uh, they generate literally very little or no heat. I, I actually put a, uh, uh, a thermometer inside the box uh, and with a cover with a poster to see what the temperature would go up to. I left it for a couple hours, and it, it maybe a degree or two is all it went up, if any. Uh, so, you know, they're very good uh, as far as that goes. So, you know, your poster or whatever you have in your frame is not going to get damaged by any kind of heat. Uh, so now I think what I'll do next, let me show you real quick how uh, a little bit more about these lights. They run on 12 volts, so any household, I just used, uh, you can see it's just a standard uh, power transformer that I had that came off some old electronics. Um, you, you can figure out uh, how many lights you can run off of one transformer. Uh, this is a one amp transformer, and you can convert that on, on the internet. They have some calculators that convert to watts to tell you how many strings of light you could actually uh, put on one of these. I, I, uh, this is about one roll of light. I, I, they're not the same, but it, it is about one roll, and you're going to notice there's a couple different color temperatures. I use some remnants of what I had from other projects, and honestly, I'm, I'm a bit short. I, I could use another row in here, I think, of, of lights, uh, but um, I don't know. I, I may fix that later or just kind of leave it. Uh, they usually come to the lights do with one of these female connectors. Um, so I just ran that into the box and it has a clip on the end, clips I was telling you about that you just stick the lights in there and you clamp them down and it kind of penetrates the contacts and allows the, uh, the voltage to go through the lights. Um, if you have trouble with those clips, uh, one recommendation is that you take a razor blade and you kind of scrape off the uh, coating that's over the tape before you put the clip on. That way it makes better contact. Um, the other thing is, like I said, is that you can just solder these end to end. Wherever there's a cut mark on the on the tape, uh, you can solder the wires directly to it. For the jumper wires, I was talking about the join, actually join the LED uh, light strips together. Uh, the ends of them flip open and you can see two contacts there and you actually just place the LED strip lighting inside of, of uh, the connector there and you just uh, you know, push the end down and it actually connects uh, onto the, the LED strip. Here it is uh, with the poster sitting on top of the light box with the power on. It's hard to tell. Uh, it is a bit brighter, uh, uh, but it's kind of hard to tell the lights on. So what I'm going to do is just kind of dim the lights and I'll uh, give you a better idea of exactly how this looks would look in a home theater setting. Here we go. So it lights up fairly well. Uh, like I said, I, I think I could use another row of lights on the right hand side. It's uh, the poster's kind of dark on that side too, but I think a, another row of lights there would, would help quite a bit. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think this is good for, it, you don't want them really bright, you don't want them distracting. 
uh, and it does you know do I think what it's supposed it's supposed to do. Uh, again, um, show you what it looks like. Let's screw it off of here. You guys, that's how the lights look inside the box. You'll notice the two colors I have: the bright white and the uh, the warmer uh, incandescent color. If I was going to do this over and I had to buy the lights, I, I would just get all the bright whites. I think they, they would light up the poster better. To kind of go over the, the cost and the materials of what you'll need, um, the, uh, the the wood, the, the board, you need like 12 foot of that. So I think I bought an 8 foot and 4 foot section of the board, uh, which worked fine. I had a little bit left over. Uh, that's going to run you around 10 or $12. Dollars. Back of the boxes, I guess one of the more difficult things to find in, in in the quantity that you, that you're going to need, you, you can find large sheets of it. Uh, you know, four by eight sheet of plywood. You could even find uh, you know half a sheet uh, of plywood. But uh, another thing you could use for the back is something they call Wayne's coating. Uh, they make a it's a it's a press board. It's a hard quarter inch material, and it, they also make it with a white surface, uh, which I thought would be good if you didn't want to use the tape. You could use the uh, the Wayne's coating board on the back with a white surface uh, facing inward that would also uh, do the reflection. That's going to run you about 10 bucks as well for, for a uh, half a sheet of, of that Wayne's coating. Uh, but, um, so that's what you need for, for the back. So that kind of covers uh, the lumber that you need. Uh, the LEDs are about, they fluctuate on the web on Amazon. Sometimes you find them as cheap as eight or nine dollars. Sometimes they're 12 or 13. Um, so you'll need at least one roll of those. Uh, I would recommend maybe buying two rows so you can you won't run short or either spread them out maybe a little further uh, than I did. Uh, so you know you got 10 or 20 bucks there depending on what you want to do. The frame uh, $65 is what I paid for this one uh, also on Amazon. Uh, and then uh, you know miscellaneous stuff like the tape if you use the tape I want to say that is around uh, $20 for a fairly large row. And the power transformer I had one laying around uh, if you don't they sell those as well probably look at spending another ten twelve dollars for for a power transformer uh, and then whatever poster you want uh, this as you know this is Anchorman 2 poster I think I paid uh, uh, twenty seven dollars with shipping for it. Now, it, it a word about the poster if you're new to this you want to make sure you get what's called a double-sided poster uh, there, it has the image it has a mirror on the back side of the same image so the light uh, shines through those uh, a lot better than a single-sided poster they tend to look very dull when you shine light through them so uh, invest in the double-sided posters a little bit more money, but uh, you'll be much more satisfied with the uh, the final outcome uh, with the double-sided poster. This whole thing is uh, that's a, a 27 by 40 poster. It's kind of a standard uh, movie size poster, uh, so it's it ends up being a you know 27 by 40 box. Actually, I think um, you'll have to measure the dimensions according to the frame that you purchase. You kind of want the frame to sit on the outside edges of the box. Uh, so that uh, you don't really see the box. Uh, so you know, just make sure you take in consideration when you do your measurements. I used uh, kind of standard uh, butt joints. You just butt one board up to the other. The thing you have to take in, into consideration when you do this is that uh, this is three quarter inch board. So uh, two of those boards account for an inch and a half. So if you do it this way, for example, you, you, you butt them this way, you have to, you know, it's going to add an inch and a half to your length. So this ends up being like 26 and a half inches, this board, the top and bottom boards, because I added an inch and a half uh, on with a side one. So it depends on if you butt them up this way or you butt them up the other way, it's going to change your, your length. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're, uh, you know, determining what your, your final measurements will be when you, when you put your box together. I uh, hope this was helpful again, and uh, thanks for, for watching the video.